is your first time. Mm. Is it obvious? <laughs> Do you, you have any tips for me? The Lonely Hearts of London are pointed towards tragedy and murder in Barnaby Southcote's jittery film noir. Charlotte Rampling plays 50-something Anna, who wakes up with a broken wrist, a bloody corpse at her side, and no memory of what actually went on. Gabriel Byrne and Eddie Marsden are the cops called in to clear up the mystery. And then there's the slow dance. But what's, what's the slow dance? It's supposed to help us overcome our inhibitions. Catherine, this film was directed by Charlotte Rampling's son, Barnaby Southcote. Um, he really puts his mum through hell here, doesn't he? He does, and also through, um, you know, talking of creepy in terms of the oranges. I mean, there's a lot of, not just kind of scenes of her in the bath, but also her putting on a frock and men going, <laughs> looking good, or just turning around and people going, whoa, great calves. <laughs> I mean, they don't say that, although the dialogue yeah. isn't, isn't its strongest Freud point. would have a field day. <laughs> um, but, you know, this isn't actually that bad. It's kind of all right. It looks good. Dialogue's not great. The plot's, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought there was quite a lot to like here. And, you know, he's given his mum a juicy, a juicy roll and she's grabbed it and sucked it dry. Like an orange. <laughs> like an orange, yes. Um, <laughs> didn't you think? Yeah, I, I thought it had a fantastic sense of this kind of emptied out nocturnal London and the brutalist architecture, a lot of it set around the Barbican, um, and just that sense of the alien city. And he's a good visual director in that I like the way that he, he has all the characters kind of pinched by door frames or curtains and everything, this sense that they're all slightly kind of trapped and, and scratching at each, each other. And the great Richard Hawley soundtrack as well. Peter, did it convince you? I Partly, yes, and I think it didn't quite come together at the end, but I thought there was lots to, uh, lots to like and to admire in it. Uh, like you, I really liked his eye for the Barbican complex and how that, so far from being a smart upmarket area, it's brutal and grim and horrible and sort of <laughs> Berlin nightmare, <laughs> this place. Um, I like Eddie Marson in it. Uh, there's some good, good cast and good casting of Gabriel Byrne as the troubled DCI mm. and his long-suffering junior, Eddie Marson. Some good, some good stuff between the pair of them. I've got to admit, I, the progressive revelation of her secret sort of made my heart sink when I realised what, what, what arena we had stumbled mm. into, to be honest with you. Without giving too much away. Without giving too much just away. back from Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> She's got this huge canister of napalm <laughs> in the box room. Um, no, I, I, so I wasn't, I wasn't a massive fan of the way the narrative played out. But it's certainly, he, he's, he's a very competent director, as I say. He's worked very extensively in television. And it's, it's very interesting that he's working with his mother. And that gives the whole thing an interesting new dimension. I've got to be quite honest, I don't think it quite came together mm. at the end. But there's, there's lots of interesting stuff. And I like the way that her job is this salesperson at Peter Jones. Yeah. And she sort of gets very sort of tired and lies down on lies the bed. Down on she's bed. Very, cause she's, uh, she does look like a very good sort of John Lewis yeah. sales associate. So I thought that was a nice touch. And the security guy says, you all right, Anna? Right, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm not all right. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I've got this terrible noir secret. I was told that a woman's greatest failing is not to want children. First date faux pas. Keep it light. I, I, I started it. 